some extent, all enemies in video games are annoying, because if there weren't any, you could complete the game very easily. So it's a bit of a rum-do that some kinds of enemies in games go absolutely out of their way to drive you particularly up the wall, with annoying, rage-inducing tactics or behaviour that only gets more irritating the more games you encounter them in. You've come across these enemy types many times before, and every time, it's the worst. The worst, I say! Here are the seven enemy types we never need to see again. I have visual confirmation. Kill her. Yes, sir. Fan out. We have her surrounded. You can tell you're about halfway through a game, not by the number of hours played, but by the point at which the game says, hey, looks like you're having a lot of fun, how about every enemy has a riot shield now? Because all too many games now seem to think it's enjoyable to present the player with a shielded enemy. That is to say, the ones who hide behind a gigantic slab of reinforced plastic or steel like a cowardly crab, and render your entire combat strategy thus far obsolete. Because apparently this is the kind of mind-bending defensive technology that has the canonical genius Spider-Man stumped. You're Spider-Man, just punch through the shield, and into his chest and pull out his heart, in front of everyone, and then web his heart to his face. What? Crime would fall. The trick to defeating a shielded enemy is almost always to remember a specific button combination that disarms them or lets you zip behind their defence, so you can fight them normally or as normal as things can be when one of you is dressed as a bat. Clearly this is the game trying to make you approach combat more thoughtfully and stop button mashing. But A, I don't know if you know this game developers, but button mashing is extremely fun, and B, the odds that in the heat of the moment you'll remember the button order for, say, cape stun then aerial attack are, well, not high. On the plus side, there's nothing more satisfying than getting one over on a foe so cowardly and annoying as to creep up on you from behind a shield like a police issue tortoise. On the minus side, the only reason that's so satisfying is because of all the times you faced a shielded enemy and came off worse, despite there being nothing very special about them. Come on, Nate, you regularly do things like fall out of a plane with no parachute. Surely this clown with a shield is not going to be the thing that prevents you from having a swashbuckling treasure hunt. And yet, my buckles remain unswashed. Your buckles? Unswashed. Unswashed. What are those things? Chickens. Locusts use them like landmines. So keep your distance. Many players like to take a tactical approach to in-game enemies. For example, you might take a moment to size up your opponents, survey the area to work out the best route to take them all down. Or you can do what some of your enemies do and just run very fast before exploding. Hmm. Despite this being a very short route to a very quick and likely painful death, there are plenty of enemies in games willing to run full pelt at you and explode, like an excited dog playing fetch with a stick of dynamite. That was a dark metaphor, Ellen, I hear you say. Well, that was how one of the main characters died in Monarch of the Glen. Wait, you've not seen Monarch of the Glen? Nobody's seen Monarch of the Glen! What? Rather than just chuck a grenade or shoot a rocket your way like some boring normal enemy, this lot are far more dedicated. They don't just want to ruin your day, but also drastically shorten theirs. For example, a grunt making a beeline for you with some hand grenades. Or one of the hiss charged in control. Horrible floaty bastards who rush at you as soon as they get near enough and detonate before you've realised what the f*** is going on. I mean, bloody hell. And even if you finish them off before they get to you, that doesn't always help, as they often detonate themselves after, just in case you're nearby. Still, nice to go out with a bang. Just like Hector MacDonald in Monarch of the- I swear to God this is strike two, Ellen. Glenn. There's no shortage of baddies who want to pull a Mad Max witness me moment. You can't even escape them in the Dark Souls series, with these weirdos in Dark Souls 3 setting themselves on fire and charging straight at you. All these enemies do is force you to leg it, panic-stricken, in the other direction as you try not to share their explosive fate. Honestly, it's one step forward and 60 steps backwards because that monster just set itself on fire and it's running straight for you! Run, run, run!
Greetings, sir. How can I help you? The name's Blaskowitz. I was beginning to think you'd never make it. There are things going on here that defy explanation. Nazis are performing some kind of experiments on the patients in the surgical... <laughs> There's no universally agreed term to describe this next enemy type, at least not one that we wouldn't have to bleep out. So we've settled on the following description. Extremely fast and agile, often invisible, ninja bastard. There may not be a single word in the encyclopedia to describe this enemy type, but we guarantee if you've played a few video games you've had to fight one at some point, and probably pooped yourself in the process, no judgement here. This enemy's main attribute is an ability to move ever so slightly faster than you can aim. An infuriatingly nimble and always creepy adversary who attacks you before backflipping out of harm's way. The extremely fast and agile, often invisible ninja bastard, chips away at your health but drains your ammunition, as you unload entire magazines harmlessly into the surrounding environment trying to clip these miserable creeps. Yeah, no shit ammunition depleted. Did you see that thing? Because I'd quite like to know where it went. Making this enemy even harder and more irritating to fight is the fact that it's often damn scary, sprinting around in a creepy crouch walk or popping invisible to give it a stealth advantage. Gross. And yet so many game developers see fit to insert this unsettling enemy type into their otherwise enjoyable entertainment products. We'd love to ask them why, and if we ever get the chance, we're going to also ask why the extremely fast and agile, often invisible ninja bastard is almost invariably introduced in a scene where they suddenly murder an unsuspecting NPC mid-conversation. A trend so alarming that we've added some cheerful music in the hope of making it less horrifying. Breathing, right? I've got a message for you. Make sure you don't... That creature stalking the hospital was created by the Nazis. They're making... <laughs> Here. Nope, made it worse. If there's one thing video game protagonists love, it's a cool outfit. So the worst thing that could happen is for some horrible creature to vom all over it. Oh, I just got that back from the dry cleaners! Oh. Sadly, you all too often will stumble into some shambling, usually undead, creature that very much wants to put its insides on your outsides. Some, like Spitters in the Left 4 Dead series, like to get you from a distance, throwing up acid all over you and fizzing through your health bar. Incoming! Others, like Weepers in the Dishonored series, like to get up close and personal. Yes, they can hurl at you from a few steps away, but these lot love to grab you and upchuck right in your face like a bird feeding its chicks. Thank God Corvo's wearing his mask or that plague vomit would be right down his throat. Oh, oh I just thought about it. Oh, oh just give me a sec. Oh. Take all the time you need. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Not content with just throwing up on you to ruin your clothes and your health bar, some even add special status effects. One of the worst examples is again in the Left 4 Dead series, where you can also bump into boomers. If they vomit on you, you'll be marked out and attract a horde of the undead, intent on tearing you down, being as you are covered in boomer bile. A bit like your weird uncle's Facebook page, only fewer minions memes. Hey, you're not a child. No. Well, this shouldn't take too long. Sensors know when something's wrong. Kill the thoughts that don't go wrong. 
seriously? It's a nice thing to receive a little encouragement, like a text from a friend before a big interview, or even just a co-worker saying that your hair looks nice today. Really, nothing. However, despite the fact that we all understand it's important to receive a little pep rally now and then, we have absolutely no sympathy for video game enemies who enjoy a similar privilege, and even less for those that provide it. Ow. That's right, perhaps the most aggravating baddie of all, the one who, like Bloodborne's bell-ringing woman, stands at the back magically making every other enemy in the room much stronger, and your game-playing experience consequently much weaker as you cry like a baby trying to find them. Where... where are you? Bellwoman. Where? Where, 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 where? Where, 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 where? See? Crying like a baby. Having to fight your way past a mass of extra tough enemies just to make it to the one that's buffing their stats feels like an activity designed to stress out the player. And yet so many games include this most notorious of enemy types, who are somehow made more, not less annoying, by the fact they're almost always extremely weak when you finally make your way to them. Usually puny baddies with little stick arms, or in the case of Doom Eternal, a literal stick. One of Doom Eternal's buff totems there, which according to the game's codex are incarnal manifestations of human suffering, which feels like an apt summary of the absolutely hated enemy who buffs other enemies. An enemy type you hate, but that is nonetheless encountered in video games in great, great volume. I said great, great volume. I literally had it cut this morning. Unbelievable. One good thing about most enemies, even the annoying ones on this list, is that most of them are a good sized target, and nice and fleshy, easy and satisfying to stab or shoot. Uh -oh. Yeah, I'm going to cancel lunch plans. Why? However, one particular enemy type is tiny and made of metal, and therefore much harder and much less satisfying to hit with a blade or bullet. In a word, turrets. These auto-targeting a-holes can be found littered around games. Not only are they harder to hit than other enemies, but they're also lying in wait for you, ready for you to pop into their line of sight so they can pepper you with ammo. They're often not easy to spot until you hear them whir into life, at which point all you can do is leg it and hope they don't hit you too many times. Plus, in a lot of cases, the only way to damage them is by peeping your head out into their line of sight and risking getting shot to pieces just to take a tiny chunk of their health. With the introduction of a turret, an exciting fight can quickly become a boring game of peekaboo, as these things pin you down to one spot until one of you finally gets the other's HP down to zero. Maybe we wouldn't mind turrets if these skirmishes were a bit more dynamic, with a bit more movement. Oh no, no, I've given the game developers ideas. No, 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 no. Oh no, thanks to me saying that just now, these turrets in 2007 game Bioshock are now real. These are a fraction of the size of the local splicers, ten times more trigger happy, and crucially, can fly. The only good thing about turrets is that, in a lot of cases, due to their automated nature, games let you reprogram them to be your little murder robots instead. Okay, when they're on my side, they're far less annoying. Oh dear fire, do you see the flames rose? Fire is a primal force that cannot be controlled, like Godzilla. And would you put Godzilla in a backpack? Actually, that sounds adorable. Sorry, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Godzilla backpacks. Flamethrower backpacks. Godzilla has a flamethrower? Man, we are screwed. Oh no wait, sorry, yeah, fire, and its habit of backfiring on anyone dumb enough to try and control it. And by anyone, we mean the dozens and dozens of video game enemies you have encountered who stomp around wearing flamethrowers. 
none of whom presumably have ever played a video game themselves, or else they would take it off immediately, knowing that if you wear a flamethrower backpack, someone is going to... Do we even need to say it? Shoot the fuel tank and explode you. Guess we did need to say it. At this point, this well-worn enemy archetype is so familiar to players, it's not even annoying to encounter a flamethrower enemy. The best we can muster is a faint sense of pity that they drew this duty on this week's henchman rotor. <laughs> Popping around in the fuel tank to see an otherwise fearsome enemy go up like the 4th of July might once have seemed like an ingenious exploitation of a weak point. But the flamethrower dummy has been exploded so many times, in so many games, in this exact way, it's frankly starting to feel a little silly. What really gets us is the seemingly boundless confidence of the flamethrower backpack enemies, who wave their nozzles around looking hard, as if they're not one spark away from exploding everything in their vicinity, like kerosene-drenched clowns. Siphon filter boss Anton Gerdou even has the temerity to give a villain's monologue for heaven's sake, despite being armed only with what we have to assume is a French accent and the most self-sabotaging weapon setup in video game history. This hall contains a mosaic depicting the entire history of your country's wars and aggression. We are about to make an addition to it. I don't think so, Gerdou. Hmm, and how'd that work out for you, Anton? So those are some of the most annoying enemies that just show up in every single game. We didn't even fight them. They just turn up halfway through. Oh, there's a guy with a shield. You, yeah, there you go. <sighs> anyway, which ones are most annoying for you? Let us know in the comments down below. If there are any other ones that always show up that you're like, yeah, these ones are annoying as well. Let us know those as well. In the meantime, uh, though, there are lots of other fabulous videos on here that you can go and watch. And why not hit that subscribe or oh, that's not annoying. Maybe, maybe the ah is.